There is a war raging and the world is taking sides, but they don't want to get involved with troops and guns. So they're turning to a new weapon, an invisible one, a weapon that is only possible because of our deeply connected world economy. Sanctions. 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 Sanctions are this thing that just get thrown around like we should all just understand what they mean. But sanctions are a kind of wonky bureaucratic tool for economic war. And they're not super easy to understand unless you crack them open and look at the mechanics of how they work. And that's what I want to do today. I want to explain what sanctions actually are, what their goal is, and whether or not they actually work. So let's go. The largest and most severe package of economic sanctions that Russia has ever seen. Before we dive into this video, I quickly want to pause for a commercial break and thank today's sponsor who made this video possible. Thank you BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. BetterHelp is a place that is making therapy more accessible to everyone securely on the internet. I'm a huge fan of therapy. I've been doing therapy for two and a half years, and I really believe in BetterHelp's mission in making therapy more accessible. Finding a therapist is not easy. And often when you need therapy the most, you're not in the best headspace to sit around and call a bunch of people and call your insurance and figure out how to get a therapist. With BetterHelp, you take a quiz, you get matched with someone in their huge network of licensed therapists, and you can start communicating with someone right away within like 48 hours. This is not a crisis line or a self-help program. This is like real legitimate therapy done securely on the internet. You can try this out for a discounted rate at the link in my description, betterhelp.com slash Johnny Harris, where you'll get 10% off your first month. You can try it out and see if this is a good fit for you. I love therapy, it has changed my life. Maybe it could do the same for you. Thank you BetterHelp for supporting my channel and supporting this video. Let's dive into sanctions. In the most literal sense, sanctions are this. A piece of paper, a bunch of lists that governments make. That is what sanctions are, bureaucratic lists. But this is a weapon of war. It looks a little bit different than the kinds of weapons we're used to seeing in war, but this is a weapon. I am looking at a list of hundreds and hundreds of names. People's names and their addresses, as well as their aliases, their birthdays, their tax ID numbers, and anyone else that is also on the list that they might be linked to. Here in the US, this list comes from an office that is focused on thinking about things that come in and out of our country. Sanctions are also this. This comes from the White House. And instead of people's names, it has industries and products like crude oil and liquefied natural gas and coal and alcoholic beverages and diamonds and luxury goods. And that is the point here. What sanctions are is a giant list of people and things that are not allowed to come into our country or whatever country is writing the sanction. Oh, and the list includes <laughs> the sale of US banknotes, like cash. Like you're not allowed to send like a pallet of cash to the Russian government, according to Joe Biden. Okay, but here's where it gets interesting. I wanna tell you how all these boring lists of paper that were drafted up in the past few weeks actually translate into economic war, what is happening right now in the global economy. It's totally invisible. It's not like tanks and guns. You can't see it, but it's having a huge effect. And I wanna show you what that looks like. The best way to do this is to look at Russia before all of these sanctions. You can see that Russia is connected to the world in a lot of different ways. I've color coded them for you. Blue is everything that Russia exports to other countries like oil, gold, coal. Orange is everything flowing the other way, stuff that Russia imports like iPhones from the US or cars from Germany, that's orange. Green is all of the money that needs to flow in and out of Russia to keep things running. That's money that businesses borrow from foreign banks or it's money that the Russian government has put into US dollars or euros so that they have reserves in case they need it. We'll call this the financial stuff. But then there's personal wealth, which we'll put in purple. One of the best parts about being a Russian billionaire is that you can spend millions and millions of dollars on a flat in London or Paris, or you can buy a yacht that you station in the port in the south of France. Russian billionaires have money and assets all around the world that they use as their global playground. And then of course there's just regular Russians, people who fly around the world for tourism and business on airlines that are from many different countries. Those airlines fly over Russia in Russian airspace to get to a variety of destinations. So yeah, Russia is connected like we all are to the global economy. We trade, we move around, and everyone thrives. 
It's great. But then Russia invades Ukraine a few weeks ago. We are coming on the air because the war in Ukraine has begun. This is totally unacceptable, says the whole world. We want to retaliate and show Putin that we can't do that. We have to set a precedent that you're not allowed to invade your neighbor. But we can't send troops like we used to in the old days because now we all have these big weapons that could destroy our species. So we can't like start fighting with each other directly. So what do we do? I know, says all the angry Western leaders. Let's start to mess with all of this. That'll teach him. Welcome to economic war, which again, like I said, starts like this. A bunch of bureaucrats making lists of people and things and vessels that are now not allowed in their country. But the hope is that it creates a domino effect that changes the course of this war. And let me show you how that might look. Okay, so this is Russia happily connected to the global economy. These sanctions target every one of these connections. Like, let's just look at imports. One of the first things the EU did was ban their countries from selling luxury goods to Russia. So the EU is like, yeah, like, we're pro-Ukraine, like we're drafting up these sanctions to hurt Russian billionaires. And then out of nowhere, Italy crops up and is like, uh, yeah, can we get an exemption? Like, can we sell our goods? Because we have like Gucci and Armani and come on. And they actually got an exemption. And then people were like, wait, no, we're not giving you an exemption just because you have all these fancy designers. Like, come on, Italy, get with it. And Italy was like, ugh, fine. But it wasn't just the EU who started cutting off these connections. Singapore banned their people from selling electronics and computers. And Taiwan, where all the microchips are made, banned their companies from selling those microchips to Russia, which is a giant deal because microchips are in everything. Hundreds of international companies that were in Russia started to read the tea leaves and they're like, we're out of here. Like imagine if McDonald's and Ikea and Apple all left your city and then Netflix announced that it no longer is streaming in your country all in the same week. Like this is real punishment. This is what economic war looks like. Okay, so that's imports. The same thing starts happening the other way. Russia is a giant exporter of oil and gas and all sorts of fossil fuels. And so the West, trying to inflict punishment on Russia, bans their countries from importing Russian oil and gas. That is a huge blow to Russia, like the second biggest exporter of refined and unrefined petroleum on Earth. The economic war is heating up. And in the middle of all of this, Vladimir Putin gets up and announces that he sees this as an act of war and that he is putting his nuclear weapons on high alert as a response. Перевести. Like this is real war tactics we're talking about here with real consequences. All right, let's get to the fun sanctions like watching rich people squirm. Oh. Back to this list that the government made of Russians who they really don't like. Those people now cannot travel to our country and any country whose list they are on. And any money that they had in our country, like if they had it in an American bank, is now frozen. They can't touch it. Like it's totally inaccessible to them. Their yachts and their private jets, if they're in our jurisdiction, can be seized. Everyone on this list is now a target and there are hundreds of them. In fact, I've been deep in the OFAC sanctions list. There are 712 Russians on this list, in case you wanted to know. It's all there on the OFAC website. So going through this list, you kind of get curious. You're like, who are these people? I now know their birthday and their address and all of their aliases, but like, who are they? Are these war criminals? Are they like military generals or something? Well, no, there's actually a few categories here. The biggest one is probably Russian lawmakers. There are now 300 of them that are now sanctioned. But then you have a bunch of rich Russians who are the heads of defense, energy, and media companies. I see. Make the most powerful Russians uncomfortable and hopefully they'll turn against Putin and get him to stop the war. That's the logic. And then you have this 26 year old Instagram star who's also on the sanctions list. Wait, what? Ah yes, Polina, the daughter of the very rich foreign minister of Russia who lives a very fancy life in London. And the UK sees this and they're like, no, you've got blood on your hands too. Put her on the list and she's on the list. And now she can't travel to London where she has a bunch of money and she has a big fancy flat and she's stuck in Russia. She's on the list. This is happening to hundreds of rich Russian people. And like, we don't know if all of them are connected to Vladimir Putin. We're just like, you're super rich and influential. So we're gonna make your life hard. Please change this. 
Speaking of travel, tons of countries have written sanctions that ban Russian airlines from entering their airspace. And tons of airlines have cut their routes to Russia. So now the flow of people, just human beings, tourists and business travelers, has come to a screeching halt. Okay, finally, the last category is big money. This is actually like the hardest one to see and understand, but maybe the biggest and most important. You have to understand that the Russian government holds on to tons of reserves in other currencies like dollars and euros and British pounds. They do this because if their currency, the ruple, falls, they can take their dollars and buy a bunch of ruples and raise the price back up and stabilize it. But now all of their foreign reserves, their euros and dollars are frozen in like American and like British banks. Do you want to build a snowman? The Russian government can't get their hands on their money in other countries. Okay, but the finance thing gets crazier. Russian banks were then kicked out of the system where banks can send giant amounts of money to each other. It's called SWIFT. They were kicked out. Now they have to route all their big payments through like China, which is like their one friend in all of this. And one more on the finance piece, regular Russians can't use their credit cards anymore or their debit cards because Visa, MasterCard, and American Express all pulled out of Russia. Like that would suck. So all of this is to say that Russia went from looking like this to looking like this, totally isolated. And that was the goal to isolate Russia from the global economy and make them feel pressure on all levels, the people, the oligarchs, the government, the military. The hope here is that the rich Russian billionaires who have a lot of influence in politics, as well as the people who are now suffering because they can't get in on the global economy, they will all look to Putin and be like, dude, enough, we're done. So the question is, will it work? Well. It depends on what your definition of work is. In terms of creating economic pain, yes, it's already working. I mean, look at how hard the ruble crashed after the war started. Because remember, the government can't get its hands on all of its foreign reserves to help stabilize their currency. The Moscow Stock Exchange closed down for weeks. The economy is shrinking. There is scarcity in Russia. But for me, the definition of will this work is will this change Vladimir Putin's mind to get him to stop fighting this stupid war? And that's a question I do not know the answer to. Because sanctions are not like normal weapons. We've had guns and missiles and bombs for a long time. We know how they work. We know how they deter people. We know who they hurt. But sanctions are not that old. They're as old as our fairly new global economic order. We make these lists and put on these bans for travel and industries and financial systems, and we just sort of hope that the ripple effect makes it to Vladimir Putin's brain. But I'm just not sure Putin is a rational actor anymore. And that is the contradiction of sanctions, is usually we put sanctions on countries like North Korea, these pariah states where the leader is not a rational actor anymore. They're bent on some weird ideological vision. They're surrounded by a bunch of yes men. And so sanctions turn into just another narrative that they can use to say, we are the victims, we are embattled, the rest of the world is at war with us. Plus, frankly, Russia still has a way out of some of these sanctions. China is still their ally in this. And China is deeply connected to the world economy. Oh, and also, do we really think that Russian billionaires are going to be stopped by a list from a bunch of bureaucrats? These people are well resourced. They're going to find ways to get around the sanctions, whether it's shell companies or middlemen or whatever. It's just going to be a little less convenient for them. So in the end, it's the Russian people who are going to suffer the most here. Well, that is after the real victims of this whole thing, the Ukrainian people who have had their country senselessly stolen from them.